This telescope can see a lot of things, but it is unlikely to find any stargazer who can match the star power of Neil deGrasse Tyson. For a man so at home in the heavens, he's actually very down to earth, as Martha Teichner discovered. This is what happened when astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson paid a visit to his old high school. Now, should you all be in class now, you're saying? You, know what? you might expect pandemonium here at the Bronx High School of Science in New York City, which has graduated eight Nobel Prize winners. For these kids, okay. the yeah. star man yeah. is yeah. a rock star. He's like uh, only the smartest man on the planet. But adults yeah, like, love him just as much. Who ever thought a scientist could be funny? You yeah, know? Exactly. Who ever thought that? You know, he's the epitome of geek cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the title this evening is Let's Make America Smart Again. On a weeknight, he can fill a theater with people willing to pay rock concert prices to see him live, talking science. She was saying that there are microbes in you that actually like chocolate and communicate this fact to your, to your eating desires, and you say, gee, I want some chocolate, when in fact, it's your microbiome that's asking for it. That's right. We're that's totally true. Yeah. He typically gets 200 requests to speak every month. He picks maybe four. His most popular talk? This movie. An astrophysicist goes to the movies. Violates more known laws of physics per minute. These bits and pieces hit New York City monuments. So the, these asteroid bits apparently had GPS locators on them. How many Twitter followers do you have? Uh, it's around 7.2 million. That's a crazy number. I don't, I don't even understand it. Every, I wake up in the morning and say, what? Should I, like, remind people? You know, you, you, you're following an astrophysicist. <laughs> Spin this around. <laughs> what does that say? Never forget. Little never forget. He's been famous ever since he argued in 1999 that Pluto wasn't a planet. He wasn't the only one, but he's still being blamed for its demotion. When people come in here and see the shows, are they typically astonished <laughs> at what the night sky looks there, like? It's almost always there's a gasp. Neil deGrasse Tyson was starstruck when he visited the Hayden Planetarium in New York City for the first time at the age of nine. Since 1996, He's run the place. As a kid, you know, I, I thought I knew what the sky looked like from the Bronx. It had a couple of dozen stars in it. <laughs> I come here, the lights dim, and there's countless thousands of stars. I thought it was a hoax. By his 12th birthday, when he received his first telescope, Tyson had already decided he wanted to be an astrophysicist to study the cosmos. So I, I lived in my own sort of little universe here. By the time he was in ninth grade, he'd bought himself a bigger, better telescope. And that telescope I'd haul up to the roof, this roof. Which freaked out the neighbors. Here I am with a telescope that looks like a bazooka, OK? <laughs> it has a white tube. It's the middle of the night. There's a white tube, and there's somebody there. And I'm, there I am, like, aiming it. So they'd send up uh, uh, the police. And all I ever have to do is say, you ever seen Saturn before in a telescope? <laughs> and then, hey, oh my gosh, it's got rings and everything. Saturn happens to be his favorite planet besides Earth. And so you would show the police officers the sky. It's transformative for anybody, especially for police <laughs> who don't know what you're doing. And At a very, very early age, we gave them the so-called talk about how to talk to the policeman if he stopped. You look them straight in the eye, memorize the, the, the badge number, politeness, no smart answers. Still, to hear his mother, Tony Tyson, and sister Lynn tell it, racism was a fact of life. They picketed when, as a black family, we were moving into Skyview, um, which perplexed Neil. The aptly named Skyview is the high rise where he did his sky watching from the roof. Now, this is what I call the daddy cool picture. Everybody was looking very cool. His father was a sociologist, his mother a gerontologist, educators. But all three Tyson children 
had to overcome obstacles. There were expectations about what we could and couldn't do, which schools we could and should not apply to. So, so essentially the guidance counselors were saying to Neil, oh, well, you know, Harvard isn't for you. Right, right. you know, what, what makes you think you can get in, uh, all, all of those things. Tyson did get into Harvard and earned his Ph.D. at Columbia. He's addressed racial barriers he faced, but prefers other subjects. Well, if you look at all my speeches, all my lectures, all my writings, there is one chapter in one book out of 13 that even goes there at all. His latest book offers a shortcut to scientific literacy, a goal Tyson pursues constantly and cleverly. His Star Talk broadcasts are like talk shows. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the science of cycling. His guests include comedians and, so? and celebrities. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to William Shatner, okay? No, but it was William Shatner is under the obligation to make sense of the universe. You might think if you're going to make a talk show on science, you get a journalist, and then they interview a different scientist every week or every day, whatever. But who tunes into that? I'll tell you who tunes Nobody. into Nobody? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. It's just... Uh, so who tunes into that? People who already know they like science. Who serves the people who don't know they like science? Do you trick them? Yes. <laughs> <You d> <laughs> <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson laughs a lot. And his office is filled with all sorts of funny science stuff. He has a way of popularizing and personalizing his message. I've been your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and but as But make always, no mistake, he takes very seriously his role as starry ambassador. And as always, I bid you to keep looking up. The act of looking up has always been one of reverence, with or without religion. There's the universe that you gotta contend with. What does it all mean? Everybody carries questions with them, harbors cosmic curiosities, and I'm a servant of those curiosities. 